guys, welcome to 3ds Max news for the month of February. Short month, but a lot of cool stuff as always. Let's start with a new website that is called 3ds Max Depot. It's a new site created by Chang Soo Eun to centralize all the 3ds Max related content. Everything that is models, animations, materials, modifiers, effects, anything that is not scripts, because we have a script spot for that. You will see that you will have different categories. We have so far a lot of animations and people can submit whatever. If you have a cool model, a cool animation, submit it to the website to keep increasing uh, the content available there. And the cool thing is like everything is curated by Chang So, so all the models here, you can be uh, sure that they are high quality. RGB Tools created a free and very useful tool to easily create fire and a smoke in your scenes. The interface allows to select between different animations of fire and a smoke or with alpha and the system will create a plane with the correct aspect ratio and it's as easy as plug and play. It's very fast to render because it's basically an image and it's ideal for mid and background renders. It's not a volumetric but uh, a lot of times will be enough. Bostek Kada shares on a script spot this free script that is a simple dialog that shows all the user set hotkeys in one list. Hovering over each button shows the category and group of the action. Clicking the button executes the action. Mosen create a fan generator. You input the spline to be used and you can select over 11 different models of fences. You can control uh, over the height and other controls for each fence. There is a free version and a pro version that costs $14. If you need to do fences, this is your script. Did you ever need to display measurements in 3ds Max as you do in AutoCAD? Dimension Shapes by Joker Martini is what you are looking for. Joker Martini created this script that is basically a total of three scripts to allow you to use all types of splines with a dynamic information of angles, linear distance and more. It's totally customizable, the script costs $8 and you can get it on Joker Martini website. Chaos announced that he's working on different ways to add AI to his products. On his website, you can see different tools leveraging AI to help artists to be more productive. We have from text to materials, to automatic ways to populate your scenes, transfer styles, aging materials, extending images, play with your voice, and other interesting possibilities that we could have in the future in Chaos products. We could see a little of these in motion on the event that they presented that is called Chaos Unboxed on his YouTube channel. The presentation, a little boring for my taste, quite corporate, a lot of mambo jumbo, but we saw some relevant content for artists uh, that you can see on the videos. Check it out. Stop Motion Generator is a script by Norberto Aguilera. You basically pick any biped animation and you have different options to control the level that you want the stop motion to look like. And it's very cool because it's not only that it's kind of like storing the animation for uh, every 10 frames, but you will see a subtle animation in between. It's very cool and it creates cool videos as you can see. He has as well a tutorial on how to use the tool that cost $12. And this month we got a lot of new distraction related stuff. We got Pull Down It, that is a plugin to create distractions with Boronoi Fracture tools and a dynamic system to simulate collisions and cache your objects. We got version 5.8 that comes with important improvements on speed and memory efficiency, improvements on a speed on the forming meshes when they are used as colliders, a new animation modifier multiplier to tone down your interactions between physical objects, improvements on wind with an occlusion mode, and a new method to add roughness to the Boronoi geometry using less polys than before.
We got as well an update on the veteran particle system that it's rule-based thinking particles. On this one, it's version 7.3 SP4. We get improvements on Mel, that is the TP scripting language. You can add markers for a more visual feedback, uh, knowing what you are doing. A new series of black boxes that are available to create in an easy way all types of explosions, bursts, debris, spikes, shockwave in just a few clicks that will play very well with this final fluid simulation real time in 3ds Max as well. And we get improvements on the SPH system that I think that the SPH system is the one of the best SPH solvers in not only in 3ds Max but all around the one that you see in inside thinking particles and again another iteration on this SPH solver more responsive to pressure changes and optimizations on calculations and finally tie flow because in February we received not only one but five actualizations for the popular particle system by Tyson Ivelle. On these five updates, we got a lot of bug fixes, but also improvements on the new star, Multifracture. With more ways to cut your geometry, with more coordinate space parameters for the cuts, added camera fustrum on tight caches to delete anything that is not in camera to accelerate your previews, improvements how tight flow handles material libraries, and on the latest version 1.105, we have a new preserve mesh volume on tight relax and a new pathfinding operator that Tyson previewed. We can see 10,000 particles finding his way out of this maze, and he claims that can work with the forming meshes and even changing topology. As always, I cover extensively each of these new Typhlow releases on my Patreon, where I showcase examples of the more relevant additions on each new iteration of Typhlow this month with a record 8 exclusive video tutorials for my Patreon. Other than the Typhlow update videos, we did a tutorial covering how we break a wall using Multifracture, and a tutorial where a ship is destroying a wharf made of good. And finally, the second part of our series where we destroy a supermarket using Typhlow. You can find everything on my Patreon, links on the description of this video. And now the favorite section, 3ds Max is only for RGBs, where we showcase things that are done in 3ds Max, not only for RGBs. We start with a very cool breakdown from Rise of the Auspicious Beast. I had no idea. It's a Chinese video game with a very cool breakdown where you will be able to see 3ds Max used for animation. And I found this very interesting. For the first time, I saw someone that is using Maya, a studio using Maya for modeling, but 3ds Max for animation. And you will be able to see that the animations looks amazing on this game. The artist direction of this video game looks very cool. If anyone knows or plays, let me know. But yeah, you can translate. It's a very complete making of. You can translate it uh, with the auto translation in YouTube to follow up what's going on. Malvar's animation showcase an awesome animation of a fox using no other thing than biped. Because even biped is used mostly for humans, it's an excellent tool to animate quadrupeds too, as you can see on these videos. And Teun van der Salm create these very cool galaxy nebulas using 3ds Max, Krakatoa and Fume Effects. It's a long time since I didn't saw some of this Nebula art that, if you remember, uh, Matthias M in YouTube was quite famous back in the days. <sighs> I'm getting a little old, <laughs> but yeah, very cool to see uh, some very cool and very well done Nebulas. And Mohamed Hejer did very good use of the new Typhlow Multifractor tools with these two pencils colliding with each other and the pencils breaking, you can see the good breaking apart. Not sure if I say it, but I love this tool and this is an awesome work using it.
3ds max k anim is a channel in youtube so far two videos and i don't know the name of the artist behind this channel so if someone knows let me know but he posts this awesome animation using 3ds max and biped one more time this month quite it's quite the biped uh month and yeah awesome stuff as we saw only two videos from this artist but both looks amazing and we have nan lee and this one you will see that it's very special in one hand he modeled this optibus prime uh done in 3ds max and rendered in corona renderer looks awesome but is not the most impressive because he separated each individual element and he 3d printed it and hand painted and built this impressive articulated optimus prime uh, on real on the real thing and you can see all the time that he spent uh, all the uh, small elements are articulated are mm, matching each other and you can see that painted looks amazing like um, an amazing job i love when we have not only 3d but 3d uh, mixed with other arts and yeah this is a clear example that you can bring your 3d stuff uh, away from your screen and make something amazing like that We have Rex Su that model and animate this awesome drone using 3ds Max, V-Ray 6, Substance 3D Painter and After Effects. I love the final result, it's a very clean render, uh, yeah, very cool. Biofaris did a very cool environment with a boat and water using 3ds Max Tide Flow on Phoenix for his demo reel and yeah, looks very very good. Changing a little the style, we have Si Shen Lin that created a very cool pixel art uh, car using 3ds Max and Arnold. You could see and found some tutorials how to achieve this on the Arnold offici official uh, help files and that's a clear example that can look very very good. And we will finish this section really strong with Ignacio Mullor who is creating a video game with a friend and has been rigging different characters and for learning to rig this he's following video tutorials from paul neal in youtube so a cool example how the community can retroalimentate itself and on his youtube channel we found this making of an a face rig showcase displaying the progress that he's uh, doing and it's looking amazing i mean i love the art style of of this girl and yeah very 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 cool uh, rigging and very cool final animations and this is the tutorial section. You know that creating cloth is not easy and we can agree that the cloth in 3ds Max is a bit outdated, however it is still really flexible and really powerful. And as Yamen al Khatib is showcased on this tutorial, is how to simulate a character that is taking a jacket on and if you ever try something like that you know that it's really difficult and you can see following his steps how he's doing it. Very cool tutorial. Emsuno shared a sewing tutorial done in Typeflow. It's something quite complicated in other software and you can see on this tutorial that he solved it in a very elegant and easy way. And more cloth tutorials in Typeflow as R3D and motion graphics showcase how to simulate this shower curtain on a 15 minutes tutorial. Paul Neal showcased on a 20 minutes tutorial how to create procedurally a tile roof using the new array modifier. As always, the tutorials from Paul are amazing. You can learn a lot of stuff, not only for the array modifier, but general workflows in 3ds Max. And we get Autodesk Media and Entertainment that will explain what is USD, the new format that everyone is using, and 3ds Max is putting a lot of effort to integrate, and what role will play at Autodesk and in 3ds Max. Sean Austin will explain how it's easier now to move assets between Max, Maya and Unreal thanks to the USD. 
And that's all for February, guys. Short month, but as you saw, quite a lot of stuff happening around 3ds Max. Remember, I love the comments and give a like, give a comment, share it with your friends, subscribe if you are not subscribed, and thanks a lot to all my Patreons that helps me doing these videos. And as well, this month uh, we got eight exclusive tutorials for my Patreons. We are doing a lot of cool stuff with Typhlow. So follow me there. I think that there's... We are having quite a lot of fun lately. Thank you a lot, guys, and see you soon. Bye.